kalo na janati tava jananam kalo na janati tava samapanam drushto maya tava mahakarah yogeshwar kal kal yogeshwar kal kal all of you who are with us right now please uh, chant this after me Yoga Yoga Yogeshwaraya Yoga Yoga Yogeshwaraya Kale 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 Shwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambho Shambho Mahadevaya
with an upturned face, slightly upturned face, eyes closed, maintain a mild focus between your eyebrows.
please, please open your eyes. <clears throat> hmm. If I knew uh, a virus could become a source of so much sense and awareness, I would have given you one a long time ago. <laughs> Why am I wasting my time trying to teach you many practices to make you aware, to make you sensible, how many things? Oh, I didn't know a virus can do this <laughs> Well, this is not a laughing matter, but uh, if you lose your laughter, the virus will not go away. If you become dead serious, you will be dead before you're dead. So, it is in times like this, it is in times like this, when we think we are in a crisis or when we foresee a crisis or there is a possible crisis, it's not happened yet but in this country it could happen any time. Unfortunately in some countries it's already hit them. It is in these times, that what kind of a human being you are matters. It matters all the time, but in normal times, all kind of flakes will escape. They can pretend. It is when crisis hits you that what kind of a human being you are becomes the most valuable thing. So right now, this virus, well, I think all of you already have read enough, heard enough about it. I will not go into the detail and the nature of what it is. But the most significant aspect of this for us is, this is not being carried by a mosquito or a mice or some other creature. This is carried by us. We are the carriers. Well, this is the problem and this is also a great advantage because we are human beings. <laughs> right now, we have to make up our minds. Are we human beings or are we human creatures? If we are human beings, we should know how to be. If we know how to be following the simple rules, of not passing it on to the next person and the next person is very much possible. If you are human creatures, you will anyway pile up on each other and make it a universal process. Maybe you are the agents of the virus. You are, I'm not joking. You are the agents who carry. Right now as we sit here and many of you wherever you are, Many of us right now may be asymptomatic carriers of the virus. In many of us it may never show any symptom. In some of us it may show mild symptoms. In some of us it may show severe symptoms. Some of us may go. But in most of us it may not show any symptom and it may just pass through us. But we could be giving it to somebody else whose life is at risk somebody else who is far more vulnerable than us. So this is why, this is the time to prove what kind of a human being are you. First of all, are you a human… are you fit to be called a being or are you just a creature? A creature of compulsions or are you a conscious being? If you are a being, the most fundamental thing is you know how to be. If you know how to be, then social interaction is only by choice. If it's not necessary, you can keep yourself to yourself and this is a great time. 
By not doing anything, you can feel hugely satisfied that you've done something wonderful for the world. How's that? <laughs> Never before you had this opportunity, I've been talking to you for many, many years, how to do nothing. <laughs> had to come up with various devices, teachings, methods to make you sit for a few minutes doing nothing. But now you have this, that by doing nothing you're doing great service to the world. Tch. Serving the nation, serving the people, serving the humanity, just by doing nothing. You will not get another opportunity like this, you must make use of this fully. No, not the people at the yoga center, I have work for you to do <laughs> Because in these uh, twenty-five to twenty-seven villages which are around us, nearly a quarter min million people exist. These people may not know how to manage themselves in case it enters. It is not yet entered rural India, so this is the time for us to go out and educate them as to in case it comes into rural India, how to manage it. Definitely in southern India, it's not entered rural populations, but in the next three to seven days, we want to make sure that everybody in the villages are conscious as to how they should deal with this, how they should maintain social distancing and personal distance between people who live in such close quarters actually. So we will step out and do some work. Oh, virus, 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 how can I do anything? Let's build a wall around yoga center and live here. No, no, that's not the kind of people we are. Hello? That is not the sort of people we are. If it is necessary, we will step out and do whatever we have to do. Uh, it is amply established in the world that largely, not an absolute, but largely, it is of people who are over sixty years of age who are largely vulnerable, those who are using any kind of immunoblockers because of medical conditions, those who are using blood thinners, those who have gone through any kind of organ transplant, these are the very vulnerable population and infants below one year of age. It is our business to ensure that that population is well protected among us. I want you to take this commitment that we will ensure in the next twelve months, because we are thinking of a twelve-month span in which this virus may play out its drama, in these twelve months, nobody in our families, nobody in the yoga center, people who are around us, who are in this vulnerable age group or condition, there will not be a single fatality. We need to take that commitment and make sure that it happens. Hmm? So we will be going through a drill tonight as to what we should do and how we should take care, what are the arrangements or rearrangements we need to make to ensure that this population is safe. Those who are in the younger group of people, those who falsely claim that you are young, we will go by your claim because this is self-declaration, you know. It's a self-curfew, Janata curfew. So if you are sixty but you said I'm thirty, we'll go by your word. <laughs> now we will uh, make some arrangements and rearrangements to ensure that the vulnerable population is well protected. This is most important. The younger people will go through some minor symptoms, or maybe little more severe symptoms, but they can easily recover with immediate medical attention. When I say immediate medical, medical attention, generally if you're infected with the virus, first three to four days generally there is nothing. Fourth, fifth day you may start running mild temperature. This mild temperature is not to be ignored right now. And by sixth, seventh day you may start mild coughing. Well, by ninth, tenth day you may be becoming as manifesting pneumonia in the lungs 
or worse, fibroids. But by the time you get mild fever, if you notice this, immediately you go for treatment. If you are within the age group of uh, one to sixty, very easily ninety-nine percent of the time you recover, ninety-nine percent of the time. With all the sadhana and uh, a certain amount of care that's gone into our lives in terms of how we eat and how we live, definitely our immune systems are better than most people who live in cities. So, uh, we should be able to go through this effortlessly, but you need to understand there is no choice as to who the virus will come to and who will it will not come to. In twelve to eighteen months, literally everybody on this planet will get it. The question is only, will we allow it to become a major calamity or will we just pass it like a simple flu? This depends on various things that we do. We will give out recommendations in the next few days exactly what you should do on a day-to-day -day basis. Even if we catch the virus, how will we go through it? But the vulner vulnerable segment of the population we must protect. That is the most important thing to do right now. So, we will be heading in this direction. There is no need to panic. What is needed is precautiousness, not panic. Above all, there is substantial data to show that if a person is exuberant, joyful and wonderful, their immune system is always functioning at a better level of protection than those who are depressed and worried about something. <laughs> hmm? I've been wanting to put on a depressed face but uh, my face is not cooperating, I think I'll get it in the next week <laughs> Because you're supposed to become dead serious. If the situation is serious, situation is serious, let's understand this. Situation is serious, you don't have to become serious. That's what is important. I am not serious. Does it mean to say I'm going to be frivolous? No. I'm just going to be joyful, responsible, sensible. This is what you're going to be. Hello? A joyful, sensible, responsible human being can deal with situations much better than those who are dead serious about everything. Especially if you're in panic, you're paralyzed. Panic is paralyzation. You get paralyzed and you think you will handle it better. There is no such thing. It's very important that all your faculties are in place, your body and your brain functions and responds to what is needed the way it needs to, this is most important. So we will create a certain situation in the yoga center to keep you up and uh, I know many people will be get worried about this, but with proper screening we will also invite other meditators, volunteers to come and live here for fifteen days or one month so that they also pass through this time in the safest place possible. Will we make sure that this is among the safest places for anybody to stay? So those of you now who are outside thinking of coming here immediately tomorrow morning, uh, we will put you through a certain period of quarantine. But we will make quarantine also a little fun. Quarantine does not mean sitting depressed on a hospital bed. Quarantine simply means uh, to ensure that you don't carry it and give it to somebody else. If it's come to you, let's deal with this in this body, let's not give it to one more and one more, that's all it is. And it is truly wonderful in the country. I know the Prime Minister gave an appeal just uh, two days ago, I think. And uh, the way the nation has responded is spectacular. Not a single person on the street, across the country, this is really wonderful. If this much awareness and responsibility is there. In every nation, if this much responsibility and awareness is there, if the people respond in this manner in every country, we will deal with the virus.
there's no big deal. But if they don't follow this, then this is not a joke. If the curve becomes very steep, if the peak rises like this, then the kind of calamity that will strike, some of the scientists and doctors are saying it could wipe out ten percent of the population. We don't want that to happen, so it's very, very important that each one of us behave responsibly. No, if in case we come in, come in, come in contact with anybody who seem to be sick, they may not be sick, are you okay? They seem to be sick. If such a thing happens, immediately you go to the clinic and get yourself checked. This kind of protocol, we have to manage this. I want you to understand this is a long haul. It's not over in three days or seven days or fifteen days. We are trying to do fifteen days to break the cycle and level out the spread. But it's not going to be over. Most scientists are saying it will last anywhere between twelve to eighteen months before our bodies learn to handle the virus. First of all, virus doesn't want to kill you, I want you to understand. It's you who die <laughs> Because the virus… for the virus, you are the habitat. You are their home, they like to live here. And of course, they would like to move to other homes, expand their territory, but they don't want you to die because if you die, one body is gone. So they have no intention of killing. It is just that if your body doesn't have the necessary antibodies to fight, if you don't have the immune system to stand up to them, then unfortunately you die. So because of that, well, the fatality is what is concerning us right now. If it is just a flu, we wouldn't care. But the fatality which has happened across the world, touching nearly nine thousand people I think right now, people are expecting it could go into millions across the world. Well, human societies if they behave truly responsibly, keeping individual distance, social distance but we are having a party in our room or in our home, this is not it. Individual distance must be there. I want all of you to maintain this in the yoga center, no matter what is the work we have. Many patterns which are already existing patterns we want to change, we want to spread out the people as much as possible. The important thing is you maintain physical distance from people, especially those people who are over sixty years of age, that includes me. <laughs> when did I have a privilege like this? So, there are many things we can do. One thing is to strengthen our system, strengthen our sadhana, strengthen our spiritual process and there are many things in the yoga center which we have not been able to attend to simply because we've been on… on the fly, seven days of the week for the last fifteen to twenty years, not a single day to stop and attend to something. So I think this is the time to attend to many things that need attention but we've not been able to pay attention to. So let's make use of this time and uh, come out of this as better human beings, it's very important. And many, many simple practices we've always been telling you, we told you like this, but you went like this, <laughs> huh? Hello? All the people who are uh, watching me in United States. Those of you who many times ask me, Sadhguru, where is my hug? I looked in my pockets, it was not there <laughs> This is good. Not just because of the virus, this is very good. This is very good because unnecessary physical contact is not good for a spiritual seeker at all because it builds a certain bondage, physical bondage, which makes honestly small things difficult. Little things that you could easily cross, a threshold becomes a wall in your experience. A threshold which you, easy, which you could easily cross becomes like a big wall that you cannot cross. So, uh, we will give out the protocol and we will also start for all of you who are here and those of you wherever you are, if you 
give out your names and register in the next twenty-four hours. For sadhana, we will do guided sadhana for you in whichever time zone you are, accordingly the right time we will do a guided sadhana process for you so that you know how to conduct the day by yourself. And as far as possible, unless it's absolutely necessary, let's stay out of normal activity and break the cycle of the virus. It doesn't exist forever in your system, it gets neutralized if you just don't spread it to other people. This much we have to do. And I think uh, we have little time, I think we should take a question. Now we have, the birds have to wait <laughs> we'll, because this is not a bird flu. This is our business, okay? Namaskaram Sadhguru. So there are many questions that has come on the social media. So the first question is from Kunal. Namaskaram Sadhguru, this is an unprecedented situation and everyone is clueless at this moment not only in the country but across the globe. Do you think end of the world is near? <laughs> this happened. Two Quaker priests were standing with a board, end is near. So, a motorist, a man driving a car, came, saw the board, put his head out of the car and said, you religious nuts and you know, all the other things, he said. And then after a few seconds, they heard screeching tires and a crash noise. Then one of them said, one of the Quakers said, I think we should have just put it as bridges out. <laughs> so we are just saying, behave responsibly, this will pass. But you want to say, end is near. No, no, end is not near. The world's population is not getting… going to get wiped out. But by the time this is done, as a generation of people, Either we will have the satisfaction, we rode this crisis well, or we will have the shame of putting our heads down that we did irresponsible things and which cost many precious lives. This is for sure, that either you will hang your head in shame in twelve months' time or you will walk with a certain sense of resolve and purpose in your life because as a generation of people, we sailed through this with minimum amount of damage to the humanity. This one thing will definitely be available to you, either this or that. It is my wish and my blessing that we should be able to hold our heads high after twelve months' time. Let's make that happen. Two more minutes. The next question is from Supraja. Namaskaram Sadhguru. My father is a doctor and is sixty-eight years old. I understand that he needs to fulfill his duties, but as a daughter, I am very scared for his health also. Please guide me how to overcome this fear. Uh, right now, uh, being a doctor is more important than being a daughter. So let the doctors doctor's duties take precedence over daughter's concerns. I appreciate and value the concern that you have, but uh, it is very important everybody stands up to do what they are capable of doing. It is not that every medical professional will be infected or will be hurt by this, sufficient care must be taken. The care is not only from the professional, but also the patients and others who come, how they behave and how they do things, just with the fear that I may have infection, you want to go and ha hold on to your doctor. That's not the way to do it. It is imp important everybody behaves responsibly, especially those who are here to serve us, we should not damage their lives. 
this is the responsibility of every citizen that you don't go irresponsibly causing infections to the medical professionals who are out there to serve us. And right now, how many ever doctors you have, it may not be enough if things go a little out of control. So when this is the case, saving and protecting the doctors is very important. Please, uh, whoever you are, wherever you are, ensure that his well-being is taken care of and necessary support is given to him in every possible way. So, being a doctor right now is very important. Hmm? So, we will be with you again tomorrow at six o'clock. Uh, let's see, apart from answering questions, uh, let us see what we can chart out and we will have a sadhana schedule going out to everybody who wishes to do. I think it's best to register. Is there a method already, how to register? Okay. They will establish a method in the next few hours and uh, if you register, we will have a guided sadhana for you. If you're feeling uh, lost at home, How's that? People used to say, home sweet home. Now when we say, stay home for two weeks, you're saying that's the biggest problem. I didn't know it was such a terrible place. <laughs> if it has been a terrible place, it's time you transform it into a wonderful place. You got fifteen days. Mm -hmm. Yoga, yoga, yogeshwaraya Bhuta 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 Swaraya Kala 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 Swaraya Shiva Shiva Sarve Swaraya Shambho Shambho Maha Shambhu, Shambhu.